What up, world, and welcome to another episode of Beer Talk Now. I'm your host, D. Neal, and man, I got drought season in the building. If you don't know, now you know. The gentlemen are ready. They've been doing this for a long time. You know what I mean? When I first talked to them and they had that Beer is Black History, which is out again, go to the hit the link. You got to hit the link and you got to go get it, man. What's up with y'all? Man? We got Brandon, we got Kev, man. How y'all feeling? What's happening? What's happening? How What's happening? Doing, What's bro? going on? Oh man, I'm just I'm just glad that we got to link together, man. Uh, y'all got this whole like literally back to back to back every every week. Y'all gonna be somewhere. I know y'all coming to the town on the 25th and the 16th. Yes, you, you still you gonna be in Atlanta on the six uh, next Friday, Eight, 18th, right? The 18th, 18th, excuse yeah, me, yeah. next Friday, yeah, next Friday. Yep. And then you just did the Pullman with you know come in with Black Calder, you know what I mean? Grand Rapid, Michigan. What up with it though? Detroit was yes, good. Peace to our brothers out there. Did a great job with the beer. Um, yes. Had two Porter haters liking a beer because me and Brandon don't like Porter. We are not Porter guys what, what, at all, what? bro. Come no. on, before we even get starting the no. questions, what you don't like Porters? Why not? They taste too much like a watered down no. coffee. Is that what you say? They taste like they taste like they're trying to be a stout. <laughs> yeah, it's a diet stout, man. Most Porters are hella watery, but they like, man. Terry and Jamal, they did their thing, man. Like I. I have no complaints, bro. The joint is good. Now we're not just saying that because our logo and our name is on it. Like, no, <laughs> the, that Pullman Porter is official. And if if you uh if you are not uh it, it, uh, hopefully yeah by the time y'all see this it'll be sold out anyway. Exactly. So, <laughs> exactly. It is what it is, man. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm looking on the website. I was looking on the website earlier. Like, man, that ain't even about this. Ain't even about to happen, man. They can't send it to me. I'm like, man, this is why I got to pull up, man. Shout out to Barrel and Flow. Got to pull up to these these beer fests and stop playing. But let, let's 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 jump into it. And I got this basic question that I always you know got to start off with something uh, interesting. You know, what opportunities did you discover uh, in doing these collaborations for Black History Month? Because I think a lot of times we get to that we want to show love to the brewers. We want to get these black brewers to to a level to where they are recognized and can get capital. But what are the opportunities that you see? Positive, negative, something they need to do a little bit better on. Uh, in the in this whole collaboration effort for the, the month of of, the, of February, you know, personally, uh, I, I can't you know speak for Kev, but I, I'll say, man, I, I I've just been enjoying doing business and doing you know square business, doing good business with with other black owned companies. Um, you know, obviously, anytime you're brewing, you you depending on if you know. If, oh man, we can't find this hop or damn, you know, the, the cooling tank went down or whatever. Like it's always going to be something like you're dealing with machinery, you're dealing with chemistry or whatnot, but everything has been, you know, fairly smooth, especially for us to do three brews. Like we have been planning to do this, you know, and started conversations last year, but we really just started knocking out these brews, I would say in the last three, four weeks. So I don't I don't know about like opportunities that have been discovered because we we really thoroughly planned this out and really had conversations with a bunch of brewers we wanted to deal with and some we were able to work with, some we weren't. But um, you know, and we will in the future with those that we weren't able to work with this time out. But it's just it's just been good, man. I, I just wanna keep, you know, pushing this line on on black owned breweries and black brewers, whether you're a home brewer, whether you got stuff in stores, whether you're one of the very few that have a brick and mortar. We want to work with everybody. Like people keep asking us. Obviously, people that are not in the beer like that think we're a brewery. Drought season is not a brewery. We are a lifestyle brand. <laughs> um, but you know, it's it's no point to compete with our brothers and sisters in this space. Like the the point is to shine the light on them. Thankfully, we both have experience outside of brewing that like just kind of helps and connections that pushes our brand, you know, to higher heights and and makes it seem bigger than it actually really is right now. And we want to, you know, shine that same light on on everybody else that's in the business that's really pushing the line like we are. Hmm. That's what's up. Kev, what about you, sir? Well, I would say that um, I think the opportunity that we've been kind of bringing people together to piggyback on the tail end of what Brandon was saying, because we're com- we're not coming from a brewing background. We're coming from a corporate America background. We're coming from a journalism background. We're coming from a um, collaboration in other uh, markets. So. When we come into the this lane, I think we bring that where people haven't thought about, like, wow, we didn't really think about collabing like that. We didn't really think about doing these multiple collaborations in different areas to, you know, give that big look and bring everyone together. Because 
partnerships are starting to build out of that. You know, I mean, people are reaching out to us and we're able to give good looks to, you know, people that have kind of already been in the game, but maybe have not known how to connect those dots that Brandon and I have been able to do. Um, and those strike is a little easier because we've done that in other lanes before. So mm -hmm. it's a little easier for us to see how these things that connect where sometimes when you're in a bubble, you're kind of in that, you know, whatever you're working on, you're not seeing the bigger picture. And we're able to step back and see that and bring that to the table. So I definitely think that's an opportunity that we bring and kind of bring that met, that science, if you will, for other people to say, like, oh, I see how this works. Let us try that in other opportunities. Mm. No, I, I, that, that's definitely good to know, because I think the business side of it, I was talking to um, Lipco. Shout out to, um, to Drew and Jasmine out there at uh, Liquid Intrusion Brewing Company in Maryland. But I, I think one of the th statements that he mentioned as far as like the fun of <clears throat> this game of craft beer, especially because he was dealing with more so distribution, that um, <clears throat> by not having that fun because everything was dollars and cents, which you got to make money so you can keep the doors open. Uh, but he also could transfer that knowledge that he had from distribution and talking to people that he typically wouldn't talk to on a day to day. And now starting his brewery, is able to look at things differently from a different mindset. And I think that is something that's very key. So I'm going to say that that's one of the biggest opportunities that I think that both of y'all bring, because even from our last episode, it was the same thing, the same uh, talking points as far as like, we're coming as, we're a lifestyle brand, but we understand how to do that. We also like craft beer and want to also show those brewers uh, or people who want to be in this business, how to look at it from that business standpoint, how to brand, how to market. So I think that's, that's clutch right there. Um, now, I, I'm thinking about this question, you know, st a city or a state that y'all been to that most people would not think of that has uh, a black uh, craft beer community that we should know about. Because I think um, uh, Black Calder, I think it was one of them, at least for me, because when I, I saw their logo, which, again, I was talking to Brandon off mic. Yeah. That logo is key. That logo is fire, man. That, the can Super that, hard. Man, Super hard. Come on. The can that they had with Patty LaBelle stepping yeah. over that joint with the, with the <laughs> come on, I mean, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> I I I gotta say, I, I just got introduced to them through this partnership. Mm. And man, they're quietly really doing some collabs, making some good beer. They're gonna be on the scene, I think, a lot sooner than um even they think because mm. of some of the collabs yeah. they've doing, just the way that they're um putting their brand together. Um, they're approaching it from the same perspective that we are. They're coming with outside um, influence and bringing that, you know, into the craft beer space. So um, I definitely would say that. But, um, you know, I got to be honest, like we're on the search for it. You know what I mean? Other than like, you know, where we've done places, uh, I think there's a couple of people we've stumbled upon. But like, there's only, what is it, Brandon, 14? Like 14 yeah. black breweries, you know, nationwide. Brick and mortar. Yeah. Brick and mortar. Fortunately, two of them are here in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? So that gives us, and I mean, got to give a shout to Down Home, even though they're not brick and mortar. Got to give a shout to um, Hip Hop Heads. You know what I mean? Now, you know what I'm saying? Conzo. They're in this space now. You got to give space to Conzo. Even though they're doing um, contract brewing, you know, they're in the space. You know what I mean? So, you know, but I think a lot of people know about Atlanta, but other places, like I said, um, Nashville has a, you know, a groundswell of it. Uh, other sure. places do, but. You know, really, I think that that's something that we're on a search to find. So anybody in this side of this podcast, if you want us to come out and do some collabs and mm -hmm. put some shine on your area, we are here for collaborations. Yeah, I'm a I'm a big picture person. So, I, I'm you know, we I, the numbers been thrown out there a million times over the last year is that we make up less than one percent of brewery owners in America. So it ain't nothing that's underrated. Everything is underrated. Everything is under the radar. And this is, you know, this is, forgive my language, this is our shit. We created it. At the we end can, of the we day. can cuss so, out here, man. We unfiltered, man. Like yeah, so dry, we can say whatever we need dry, to say. <laughs> drought season, if don't nobody else want to say it, you know, because every a lot of people want to, you know, don't want to offend their political connects. I can say it. We here to take it back at mm. the end of the day. So everything is under the radar right now. And our goal is to make it over the radar. Our goal is to make it in their face. Like, we make everything cool in pop culture, period. Mm. And in order for craft beer to cross over, you gotta think about it. With Tropicalia, Tropicalia from Creature Comforts was in one of the biggest movies of all time, at least of our time, and which led to them getting a whole space in California. So they're one of the few breweries 
that you know are independent that are going to i believe future companies still independent is it not so I correct me if i'm yeah wrong. to my knowledge to my knowledge okay so they're one of the few that are going to be big independently and mm-hmm. you can still ask the average person about creature comforts as a company and they will have no idea what you're talking about unless you are super into beer you mm. know what i mean at the end of the day so like we're still small if you look at that even a popping independent company beer company on instagram you don't see 50 60 000 followers like this is still fairly small even though it's a billion dollar industry in order for it to take it to the next level it needs us but with the unlike other industries that we have taken to the next level, our goal is to make sure that we eat and we are in decision making capacities as this thing grows. Man, no, I, hey, I, I, word of, I gotta have this sound machine, man. That's why I need to start doing it. We the best, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, because it, it's, it's it's facts too. Because I think a lot of people when we talk about craft beer. Um, especially with, with black folks, they look at what the hell is craft beer for the ones who are, have not been into this social media space or connected with us in different uh, aspects of when they're just out and about or going to different cities or states. Uh, but they look at, okay, I look at, they look at Budweiser, Heineken, Corona, uh, and they look at Samuel Adams for crying out loud, um, who went, had a thousand dollars for a share to drop back down to 400. But they look at that and they're like, okay, that's big business. And then they look at craft beer and it's like, eh. It's like, yeah, what's the possibility? And they and they fail to realize that this Budweiser and all these companies started off small too. And it's that marketing right. and branding, which I'm gonna get to in that question as I will want to ask too. Which, but people just don't people always uh wanna see like, well, you've been out for what? You you've been out for a year. So where you where you what you doing? Do you know some people took them 10, 20, 50 years right. to get to the level of <laughs> or where they at to where their brand is synonymous with what something that you speak about, but I think because we so don't put the work in and I, especially with y'all, y'all get to put the work in, y'all get to look at people when they really like, when it ain't all smiles and giggles on, on social media, when it's, when it's like, bro, how are we about to, how are we about to even get a brick and mortar or how, when we got a brick and mortar, how are we going to make rent? Cause we still got to put uh, liquid in the tank type of thing. And yeah. I think that that's what's, that's what's missing, man. Like that work. And a lot of people just do not see it, man. So I appreciate I think that. It's, I, I think it's that, but I also think it's like, you got to think, bro, like as big as, Budweiser, as big as Coors, as big as all that stuff is, like, when is the last time you we thought of a beer company or a beer being cool? Like, Corona might be on the cusp of being cool because of the partnerships with Bad Bunny and Snoop and all of that, but, like, dog, the last time the beer was cool in pop culture was was my liquors. You know Spud, what I mean? It was Spud McKenzie. Was not. Spud McKenzie. But not even, but Something I mean, like that. That was like a pop culture thing, but like literally like cool, like really cool was like St. Ives and OE. You feel me? Like Sick. there was a time when vodka wasn't cool, but A-Ball and MJG made it cool with Grey Goose. Puff made it cool with Syrah. You feel me? Like everything goes in cycles. It ain't even really about the product. It's how you market the product. And a mm. lot of a lot of us don't understand marketing and branding on that level. I think a lot of us think like, and when I say us, I mean at beer, um, you know, it's like, because it's so regional and everything, the, the business model is archaic, not because of us, but because of the laws. So mm. it, it's difficult to get popping across the country, but as big as Budweiser, that shit ain't cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't seeing nobody yelling, uh, with the exception of when, when people was wearing NASCAR jackets. You don't see nobody walking <laughs> around with no, no Budweiser and no cores and nothing like that on their chest, like proudly. That's why we here. We wanted to be, I think we said this before, like if yeah. I'm in, I travel the world, bro. If I'm in Vienna or I'm in, in, in Sao Paulo and I see somebody with a Dilla t-shirt on, I know immediately that they know where I can hear some dope hip hop. They know mm-hmm. where I can go buy some records. We want it to be, if you anywhere in the world, you see somebody with a drought season shirt on, they know where the good beer is. It don't matter where it is, they can point you in the direction of the good beer. Branding yep. and marketing, brand. You can have the greatest product in the world. You don't brand and marketing right, it don't even matter. See, man, that's what I was about. To, and I was about to ask that question anyway. I didn't even, I didn't, this question ain't, <laughs> ain't written right. Nah. I was about it. But why must branding and marketing be done right? Because, I mean, and you already was answering that, but I, I think that, 
that is something even for myself as a podcast, I'm learning that too. Like you're talking about templates off 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 mic yep. and just yeah, have yeah. standard because people don't I think we spend so much time on social media, whether it's Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, whatever. And it's like, you're, you're trying to type these things, make them very short. Twitter, you make sure the characters stay very low because people's attention span is very short. But then as you was mentioning to me off mic, man, like a lot of people don't even read the even the short subtext, man. Right. It's like the it's like the one word type of thing. So why why must it be done right? <laughs> why must it be done I right, mean, especially for black brewers? <laughs> I can't. I, I, I want to hear uh, Kev. Your thoughts on this. I, I know when I walk into like here, we have like we have Hop City, we have certain stores that carry a bunch of different beers. Mm-hmm. And I'll just go in to see what's new. And it can be overwhelming to me. And I love beer and I know what I'm looking for. So the person that's a novice or entry level, I know it's overwhelming. So dude, if I bring out 50 beers in a year in my brewery, which is a lot, and Every time we drop, the can looks different. There's no brand recognition. If gotcha. Nike changed the swoosh every time they put out a sneaker, if Levi's changed the tab on the jeans every time they put out a sneaker, you're going to get confused. And you're just going to be like, I'm cool and walk out the store. But it's like, I think we just go over the top so much with things that like you don't think about continuity, branding, and marketing. We just had this conversation. We were doing a flyer. I was like, yo, them colors don't align with what we do. Like, <laughs> We need to go. We need to stick with what people know from us. <laughs> people can recognize it immediately because folks got a lot going on, bro. They ain't got time to be studying and thinking, man. Man, people try to figure out how they're gonna feed their kids when eggs that went up from two dollars a carton to five dollars a carton. Bro, you, know what I mean? you heard mine in the background. I'm just like, I'm right. gonna get this. Right. I'm gonna get this oat milk to you because she ain't drinking regular milk out here. I'm like, oat milk going to go to six dollars. You wild. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> Oh, uh, no, nah, man. I th- no, that's, that's, that, I think that's that's something I'm definitely going to clip that up. But that that is something that I think the problem with I th- as a newbie, because uh, I still feel that I'm like not even a rookie. I say I'm just a noob. I think that you want to get this. Um, you want to hit people with this wow factor. But the problem is, as you continually try to chase that wow factor, you don't build the base that you're talking about as far as that brand recognition. So if you change your logo every couple of months or or you just don't like it or whatever the case may be. It's like you're you're restarting for the audience that even the audience that you have. I mean, even the audience that you have. So I just think is it's key because a lot of people, I think, don't think about that. A lot of brewers, especially in this craft beer game, uh, when you have because I, I see I, I talk to a lot of uh, white brewers. I talk to I go to a lot of breweries that are predominantly white, especially even in the Bay Area. I mean, you're talking about the Bay Area alone, 100 breweries in the Bay Area alone. Sure. You go. <laughs> And and majority and all of them, not even majority, all of them are white owned. So when you step in there, you they don't it's not they don't even have to have the type of branding and marketing aspect or mindset that you're talking about because they got their community right there. So they can drop if they, unless they're trying to dish, uh, distribute like an East Brother. East Brother is simple. They keep an East Brother in the front. You may get a different color uh, change on the can, but at the end of the day, it just say East Brother on it. And they they at Costco. They going they going out to Mexico, but they are distributing the number one selling beer in the world, which is loggers. I know people say I love to say IPAs, but loggers, pilsners, right. all that still run it. Right. And, and it's just I'm, I, I look at that and I'm like, man, how do you how do you do that without feeling like you're you're boring or someone saying that you're boring? Because I think that's another thing that people don't want to be. They don't they don't want to be the the born uh, brand company. But I'm just like, if it's consistent, it's consistent. So. To that type of question, like, oh, if someone that statement, excuse me, when someone says, "Man, that's a boring logo," what, what, what do you do? Just change that joint? You, you, you start over? What, what's, what do you? What's the, what's the uh, input y'all got on that? <laughs> I personally feel like your logo should tell a story. Like, hmm. we are, you know, trying to figure that out. Still, we've been in business for a little over a year, and we're trying to figure it out with our situation. But like, companies do change their logos. Like, I've worked for a bunch of huge companies and they change their logos, but there's a story and there's a rollout behind it. You can't just mm. go from we're red and white on Tuesday to we're black and purple on Wednesday. Like there has to be thought behind it because people don't thinking, I think I got this from the homie glasses Milan, like thinking is a luxury that most people don't have. 
So you, you really got to <laughs> you got to break down things and explain things to people like folks, especially bro, we we from the Bay. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's expensive. You got people making six figures that got roommates. You feel bro, me? Like man, it's <laughs> same with LA, same with New York, same with Hawaii. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like so Atlanta is getting there. Like thinking is a luxury. Like you really got to break things down and spell things out for people. Mm. Man, Kev, I'm saying, man, I want to leave you out. <laughs> no, I, this is what I would say with the branding and marketing. I think that you have to have that consistency. But you got to have pops. You got to have things that get the attention of everyone. I think that's what's given us um, that attention is that we were consistent in our branding. We haven't really gotten into a lot different than our logo merch. A couple things here and off that we jumped out and done. But other than that, we've done our logo merch. And then we give the pops with Beers Black History. You give a pop with things like that, but we kept yeah. things consistent. I think that's what's gotten us to where we're at. And to your point, what the brand's point was saying earlier, when you do walk in and you see all these different things, you know what I mean? You don't really know where to go. And I think the fact that we're kind of giving these pops and making it easy, people are reaching out to us because we're an easier outlet to get into it because we're like, hey, here's this thing that's cool. Hey, here's this thing that's cool as we're keeping that consistency. So that's something I think, you know, some brewers could say. I think a lot of companies do a good job, but, you know, I think also – we have to keep in mind that, you know, sometimes we can keep it simple. We don't have to do a lot. Just have a brewery. You know what I mean? We don't have to do all these amazing things to, you know, like other places. You got to, you know, a good location. Make, de- make you know, not even great beer. Great beer is good, but if you make decent beer, you can you can keep it going. So I think that's the thing that, you know, making sure you have those pops and making sure that you just have those outlets that people can get easy to that information. For sure. For sure. Uh, again. All these gems out here, man. That's what I'm talking about, bro. I got to start yeah. doing this. And I just want to stunt that I'm actually sipping the first of our Blackberry Wheat Ale right here. And that's I why ain't even at it. Yo, that that's why you good. see me keep talking because the, the brewers are over here saying, like, what do you think? I'm like, well, I'm in the middle of a podcast, but I got to try it because <laughs> I'm back in the brewery. And um, it's, it's definitely coming in with a tart profile. Um, the wheat on it gives a nice back end. Okay. So for here. those that like sours and tart beers, I think this is going to be right up your alley. Shit, I might have to pull up the night to we hear. Yeah. taste a little bit of it, man. I ain't had Exclusive it. out here. You can show the they color. Really just, they put really it in the camera. Put it in the camera. Put the they color really in the camera. Down. Let's get that color. You get yeah. that color. There we go. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah, that's nice. See right that? Right man. This was brewed by um, our brothers in Atlanta, Skinny and Scales, with the help of Joel. Um, yes. Franklin, who's a great brewer, you know, I mean, we're gonna, definitely going to have him talk about how he brewed the beer, but um, I'm very happy with it, and I think everyone else will be once they come out on the 18th to our event on the release. It's February 18th, man. It's coming up soon. I'm be dropping February it. February 18th, Kentucky, brand new brewery, yes. right in, you know, what I'm saying, mm. the heart of Atlanta. Mm. Man. Absolutely. That's, again, bro, this is beautiful. And then the 25th in the town, baby, we in there, no. Yes, sir. Yes, he, he sir. Already know. He know. He, he already know. Gonna, so I, y'all already have, shit back. Hey, man, come on, man, come on, man. They don't know about it. Uh, but I wanted. To, I'm gonna ask this question anyway. Uh, just a vision for these collaborations, and I think y'all you you spoke it to, you spoke to it uh, to me when we were off mic, Brandon. But overall, like, what is like what's what's the vision by doing these collaborations? Because I know it's not just this month. I know y'all been look working. Y'all been doing collaborations yeah. just over and over like what's what is the vision for drought season um to in doing these collaborations like what what do y'all what do y'all want to accomplish um uh, with doing these for us it's twofold um it's i feel like it's the same thing where rappers do collaborations for rappers from different regions do collaborations with each other like we are tapping in each other's fan bases you know what i mean since our very first event we we collab with different home brewers, with different brick and mortar breweries, all of that. And for Beers Black History, the point is like, I don't want this to ever just be an Atlanta thing. You know, even though Atlanta's beer scene is crazy right now, I don't want it to be an Atlanta thing. We want to work with brothers and sisters all across the map. So this was the point. That's why we work with Black Calder. That's why, why we work with Atlanta, Tucky. That's why we work with Helicoaster. And like I said, we had conversations with Black owned breweries in different markets around the country it's just timing didn't necessarily work out or politics or whatever like and it's you know it's no love lost we're gonna tap in with our songs but yeah it's 
it's the vision is just brand awareness, man. Like we pushing the line. Like I said, we're this is too small to be worried about competition. <laughs> we have to work together in order to get there. Ain't nobody gonna get there on their own. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. And I definitely think the vision is to put that highlight on some of these breweries nationally because Black Alder beer, I'm in Atlanta, you know, with our beer, you know what I mean? People are getting, they would never have a chance to taste the great recipes that these brothers have done had we not done that collaboration. So my vision is to kind of be that bridge because we have, we're able to be nimble. We're not a brewery. We're not focused on one area. We can do these collaborations, you know, we can bring the highlight, you know, we're, we're not like a truth be told, the beer is just a good compliment to what we do, but everybody wins from it. You know what I mean? So that's where we really, yep. you know, we build that bridge for them. You know what I mean? It's like, Hey man, let's put some highlight on your brand, connect us with, you know what I mean? Some of your, um, you know, target market, some of the people you work with in your area. And we get to have that national appeal and people are like, Oh, well, is that your beer? It's like, no, but these are our brothers. Reach out to them. Mm. If you're in the area, pull up to them. If you have friends and family, have them reach out to that or try to make, you know, your way to connect. And then collabs get built from that. Somebody sees them, they say, hey, we didn't even know you were out there. We collab. So to me, that's a beautiful thing that I don't even think we really thought of. It's just happening of us just trying to push our brand awareness by working with, you know, all these different great brewers. Hmm. Yeah, man, I can just shut up and just let y'all talk for another hour about y'all sales, man. I, can just, I just need to put these, I need to put these questions up. Let y'all, let me sit back. No, this is, I, that's just key, man. Like Black Calder, I remember meeting them uh, when they came to uh, Canada, Oak, California with, uh, with, with Tio and Benny, and I was yep. I was working on getting the episode with Tio. But I knew now that I see, look back on it, he was like, "Hey, man, talk to them." Like he was trying to get me to talk to them because he was doing he was playing dominoes, and I'm like, "Man, I'm about to set this mic up right here. We about to we about to talk while you playing dominoes." Yeah, the, dumbest, yeah. the dumbest decision ever because every Tio was smacking the table down. Right here. <laughs> you know him, bro. Like just. Just, just loud as he could be, bro, having a great time laughing. So I was like, all right, man, let me go Black Calder. But Terry, Terry had that energy, man. Like he had that, he definitely has that energy. And like, you know, it's not a, it's not, uh, it's a, it's an ego and a sense of confidence. And I love what he's, he's like, we know what we can do. And when we come up to these breweries and we, they're trying to talk, talk yeah. business, we're going to talk business. We're not going to be with all niceties. And we got to, we, we have a, a, we have a following. We have people that we're going to grow with. And I think that this is just a continuation of doing that by doing those collaborations. So definitely a key thing right there, man. I really appreciate that. So one of my, it's one of my few questions, you know, my last question, imprint. So I was thinking about this and I was like, all right, people are going to try this beer. Uh, they're going to, they're going to talk to y'all. They, um, you're going to give them some, some conversation about whether it's the brewery that you work with, whether it's the, the you got the uh, beer is black history, whether the up and coming projects, but what imprint do you want to live? live? Yeah, exactly. That shirt is fire. I'm getting a new one. I'm getting a new one. My girl, uh -huh. yes, sir. I got a too small size, but um, what imprint do you want to leave on these, on people who come to events uh, regardless of where it is, any collaboration y'all doing and have this beer, like what, what is that imprint you want to leave, leave on them? What, what do you want them to walk away with Why just, but just having just a small conversation with them or no conversation at all and they just had a beer? Uh, I just want them to, to understand that like we're here for the long haul. We want repeat customers. Like I, I honestly, like I study Barner and Nima and what they've done with cookies. I feel like mm. what they've done with cookies is, is take the love that people have for the cannabis, for cannabis, the cannabis industry, and turn it into a, a mass marketed thing that's still cool. Um, and that's kind of like, I, I believe that's what we can do with drought season. Like people drink beer across the globe. People love hip hop across the globe. Those things have merged, you know, a couple of times in, in history and they're merging again, believe it or not. And I, I want to be on the forefront of that. Um, so that's what I, I want to leave with. Like, this isn't a fly by night situation. This isn't like we saw a burgeoning business opportunity. Like we really drink craft beer. Like that's what we do. I probably I have a cabinet full of beer and a shelf on my fridge full of beer. Like that's mm. kind of what we do at the mm. end of the day and like i said this is our shit like mm. we're here to represent that and it ain't even you know obviously you know black people we haven't even got into it black women created the first known beer recipe in 3900 bc mesopotamia 
He's the, 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 the first model for, for breweries came out of ancient Egypt. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, when you look at Black Calder logo, that's the Zulu goddess of beer. Yes. You feel me? Yes. It's the Calder logo. So it's like, it's there. That's 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 the line we're pushing at the end of the day. And I want people to understand that we are here for the long run. We want repeated customers. We're going to be here for a minute. We're working with the companies we work with for a reason. We could have been done collaborations with mainstream breweries and all that stuff. We choose to work with Black brewers and black owned breweries because that's the line that we're pushing. And at the end of the day, like we want you to support. Go to droughtseason.com, buy the product. Here is black come history. On, come, come to on. the events. You know what I mean? We're in Atlanta at Atlantucky, um, right on the north side, right in Castle Bear Hill on the 18th. We're in the town at Federation on third and Jack London. You Square. already know, on, man. Let's on, go. Uh, <laughs> February 25th. Like we'll have product with us. You'll be able to sample the beers. Like this is this is a real thing. Like we are really pushing the line on this on black owned things, on craft beer lovers, on just cool stuff that you can wear. Like we cool fashionable dudes, man. I don't really want to wear some of this corny stuff that they be pushing out here, man. Like we we wear things so you can really represent at mm. the end of the day. And it's 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 not a, a, a mystery that, you know, we've gotten some of the national looks we've gotten being a company that's only been here for a little over a year is for a reason like we really do this we really put thought into it we really put blood sweat and tears into it you know shout out to everybody who's helped us along the way shout out to the homie sean fallion who designed you know the logo shout out to fulani who shot our lookbook shout out to killer mike who prepared in the first lookbook shout yep. out to, to craft beer connoisseur aka chris shout man out shout out Charles chris <laughs> shout out to it's funny, we were just in Grand Rapids at uh at uh Broadleaf and this white guy came and was like, I'm just, you know, asking, is it cool if I if I wear this? <laughs> like, absolutely, man. <laughs> Peter Peter Kylie from Monday yeah. night. We purposefully reached out to Peter, who was an ally mm -hmm. in every sense of the word, to be in mm -hmm. our first look book because history don't care about your race, history cares about the victors. And mm. beer is black history, period. Mm. Peter Kylie looked like a young Michael McDonald and he represented <laughs> in our lookbook straight up. And that's my guy. And he's All day. really one of the first people to work with Nappy Roots and see how things go full circle. We yeah. had Atlantucky on the 18th and can't work with Atlantucky on a day to day basis. Man, yo. I'm yo. here at Atlantucky right now. That's with, the, with, as you hear, everybody in the back, you know, putting together the master <laughs> plan. Man, you know, yeah. for next week and everything, but you know, I represent both, you know what I mean? But you know, the thing I think that I want to make the imprint on, and I think is very important, is for people to understand that these are this is cool to drink beer, you know what I mean? It isn't your Budweiser, yes. it isn't your Corona, you know what I mean? You can come get some of these great flavors. I mean, it's going to be hard to find some of these beers that you would have a lot of Man. times when you're not getting concierge into the game. And that's what I think we do. You know, I mean, we're able to bring people that wouldn't normally have beer into having no merch, you know, sipping beer, you know what I mean, with a great brewery with Atlantucky. Like I said, hip and hops. Got to give a shout to my brother-in-law, El Sharpton, who's paved the way for all of us in this game and really, you know, gave us looks, you know what I mean, the, you know, in front of the scenes and behind the scenes and is, you know, rep his family. And that's what we're trying to do is build a community with that. Brandon always says this is like sneakers back in the day, hip hop back in the day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We're trying to, you know, take from that time and and just, you know, relish in when it's fresh and new and everybody is creative. And that's where we're at. So we're like I said, we feel we're the perfect people to build that bridge. And that's what we're doing with all these great breweries from here in Atlanta to um, Grand Rapids to Oakland and wherever we're going to go next. Man. Right. And also, we shouted Good. out, you know, <laughs> we shouted out Black Calder. We also got a shout out Ambiance and and oh, all yeah, the kids and, and, and all the out there and all of them that yeah that sure. held us down and represented with us at Absolutely. our event uh, yesterday. Yeah, you know, Friday. Yeah, and I think that's a dope thing too. Is that these cats aren't really in the beer? You know what I mean? And us because coming to the game, you know, the fact that it's you know black owned as brothers is doing it. That's just giving people shit. Let me let me try it. You know what I mean? Let me. Let me step in and see what, oh, okay, this is good. I can do this. is like coffee. I never would have thought this. My first dark beer was Guinness. You know what I mean? I wouldn't expect it to taste like that. And they would have never had that experience had we not, you know, had these partnerships and be building that bridge. You know what I mean? So that's where I think that, you know, we're beneficial to the game. You know what I mean? That's not even trying to be arrogant or anything. It's just stepping back and looking what we're doing and connecting these dots 
And, you know, I mean, I think it's, it's really helping a lot of these people that wouldn't get these looks to get these looks and helping us to grow a brand that we believe wholeheartedly in. And talk Absolutely. that talk, man. That ain't, that ain't arrogant. That's just just speaking truth. You know what I mean? Like you gotta, you gotta. Ain't nobody gonna tap. Ain't nobody gonna pat you on the uh, on the back. Say good job, but you. And, and <laughs> I mean, Absolutely. in a in a real way. You know, right. not until not until you get if you get you know when y'all get major. Not if when y'all get major, and then people be like, oh y'all so great. I followed y'all whole career. Blah blah blah. Nah nah nah. So you right. talk, see that steam in the background. We out here yeah. doing it. No, nah, man, hey, that's fine, really man. That type of noise we need. And when they see the video, they go, oh, okay, I see it. So in my last question, man, I, I just wrote that down when you said creative, uh, creativity. Um, like, how do we keep these black brewers creative in this craft uh, and, and making craft beer? Because one of the things that I hear over and over and over again, capital, brick and mortar, capital, brick and mortar. And I got it. And I, consistency is key. Um, again, I mentioned East Brother. I mean, they're not black owned, but they're. They sell loggers. I mean, that's what they're known for, and it's consistent. But one of the things I'm I'm, I'm weary of is that when we get caught up in, like, currently right now, you have hazy IPAs, you have IPAs. <laughs> I mean, and that is just constantly selling and consistent, but I think people, they don't, they don't reinvent the hazy. It's just like, how hazy is it? How much uh, pineapple or tropical fruit can you get? But it's, it, it's certain smaller breweries are are breweries that are a little bit more well-known that try to tweak that. So it's not necessarily hazy. It's just called a hazy IPA, but you get different flavors. How do we keep these black brewers staying creative so that they don't lose that uh, edge to push something new instead of saying, now this is the standard. So we're going to make hazies for another five, I mean, two years, three years. I think it's balanced, man. I feel like you've got to keep the lights on, but at the same time, you got to cr be creative as well. It's just like putting together an album. It's like, yeah, you got to have the singles. The radio can get on in the middle of America, can hop on, but then you got to have the album tracks that the heads will be like, you hear that shit? Like, bruh, you know what I mean? It's the same thing, man. Like, you can't have a whole bunch of experimental stuff and you're trying to keep the lights on. You you have to have a balance between the two. And as a people, we're just, we're creative. Like, it's innate. Like, it's in us. That's just what it is. We're always going to be that way. But you also have to recognize who your audience is, who your consumer is. And, and work with them at the end of the day if you are it's again going back to hip-hop if you just want to make what you want to make drop mixtapes and give them to your homies if you want to have a career a sustainable career oh, then do what your fans want to hear to an extent and also manage it with doing what you want to do it's all about balance in my yes. opinion nah that's a great i agree with that but i also think that uh, and, uh it's funny me and Jamal had a conversation about this because they're making certain beers, but you know, you got to make everything to know, to be able to know what you can do. So you got to brew Ooh. all the different styles. You can't yeah. just say, Hey, this is what it is. How do you know? How can you be in those conversations if you're not brewing everything? How can you mm. really know what right. you're doing? So they have you, you have to try out a different style. You have people that know me know I don't like sours because they taste sour. Not a fan, <laughs> but I had to get in that lane if I'm going to be in this realm to have these conversations and say, yeah. you know what? I don't like sours, but that's pretty damn good. Yeah. Or, you know, so yeah. it's just something that has to happen. You know what I mean? Whether, I mean, to Brandon's point, you got to keep the lights on. You got to have your hazy IPA. You got to have something juicy. Um, but you got to, you know, you got to have all the sweet things now to get people in there. You got to have seltzer-like things. I, you know, all of that. Yeah, you got to do that. The hot gotta, water. Yeah, <laughs> but you got to brew a half. Man. You got to brew something, you yeah. know what I mean? A Belgian. You have to step in that lane to say, okay, so now how can I pivot to other things? So that's mm -hmm. what I think is if they want to stay nimble, is, yeah. if the black brewer, any brewer, you know what I mean? Especially our brothers. You got to try everything. You got to brew all styles and you got to be nimble, but find that core of where you're good. Um, my brother Clarence at Hypno Hops, he got his sour shack because they make good sours. So he said, you know what? This is my consistency. I'm going to focus on my sours, but I'm going to still make hefts. I'm going to still make Belgian. I'm going to still do these. I'm going to make a triple. You know what I mean? This coming out. You know what I mean? Keep that on the low. We got a triple coming out. <laughs> we collab. Yes, you know sir. what I mean? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Exclusive. But, Exclusive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, that's the thing. You have to do it. You have to do it. So that's a, mess a message we can all put to them, and they'll find out quickly that if they want that credibility in the game, you're going to have to step in every lane. Hmm. And that's, that's another thing. It's like find your lane and don't necessarily stick with it, but exploit your lane. 
at mm. the end of the day. We all know breweries that be like, man, they IPAs is fire. Everything else, eh, or they yeah. stouts is fire. Everything <laughs> else is eh. Like, That's I a just fact. Spent, yeah, I just spent like, I think like 10 days, 10 days, two weeks, something like that in Austria and, and Germany, like late last year. I was like, fam, you can't, it's all coach. Mm. It's all hefts. Like it ain't, you go to a place and they got two beers and mm. they've been there for 400 years mm. and they may do some those for Oktoberfest, but literally they would go crazy if they came to America and saw 40 taps, they wouldn't mm. know what to do. You know mm. what I mean? But that's just, you know, we live in a capitalist society. That's kind of what it is. But you always got to find your lane. That's what anything. You definitely got to find your lane. And that's any business. And I not to give up too much game, but it's like. <laughs> You're driving a lot. About, yeah, no, we're talking <laughs> about capital and, and things of that nature, man. The, the, the margins in beer is better than the margins in the dope game in some circumstances. Mm. Speak like, on it, man. Come on, man. Like, that square on, money, man. like you said, bro. I love when you said square money. I was like, that's a definitely yeah. tail man right there. He you, said, you better come in. in. Like, you better come on in because it's going to be a point in time where it ain't no more space mm. and you can't come in. So you better come on in, man. Like, the margins is good. You just got to understand business, understand who your consumer base is and exploit it. Gotcha. Man, I I, got, I didn't even get a chance to write a question because I was like, man, this man dropped it. <laughs> I was going to ask about that too. But no, um, man, that's key. I mean, that's key, bro. It's, I I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I, I love yeah. it, man. And it's, and it's, I think for craft beer, one of the things that we're, well, at least with a lot of people who are not brewers or don't collab with brewers on a consistent basis, where they're at right now is just like, how do I take that influence and how do I push it if I'm really about getting these brewers to get to the next level or pushing them to is more than just them doing a collab with everybody else. And then them trying to figure out what's the next beer they're going to make or not, or how much tank space they're going to have. Uh, I think a lot of influencers now are really kind of hitting that, hitting that ceiling of like, okay, yeah, you, you got your core group of people that you are comfortable with, but you got to get uncomfortable and you got to push that narrative. You got to push that narrative for the brewers that you want to succeed. I mean, and you got to just you got to talk business. And I think as I'm learning business in a, in a real way, not just that, oh, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur and, and love everybody like to say that, like I'm an entrepreneur, I'm for the culture, blah, blah, blah. But it really comes down to sitting down and just learning terms or just understanding the marketing side, just the basics, man. I think that that is something that we as influencers, uh, I hate that word, but that's what you <laughs> have to have to step in. And I think y'all, when you called it a lifestyle brand, the first time we did an episode, man, I was like. I got to start saying lifestyle brand and stop calling it just even just a podcast too. like Dame Dash told Earn Your Leisure. It's a show. It's not a podcast. Now they syndicate it with the Fox Soul. Like you just you got to use different terms, but you got to walk in that path to your point. You got to find your niche, but you can't get bogged down to it, especially in the States to where you don't grow outside of that. Because, man, if I go to Germany, when I go to Germany, it's like two beers on tap. I'm probably going to be culture shock myself, man, because I'm like, damn. Yeah, that, that's it. Like, I mean, and yeah. Then, yeah. For real talk. Too, too spoiled. But it's it's spoiled. it's kind of it's overpowering to it's it's not overpowering. It's overwhelming to be to go. Like I went to Augustiner. One of my coworkers took me to Augustiner. I'm like, bro, this shit is legit. Been here for like three, four hundred years. This is crazy. Mm. Like America ain't even approached three hundred years. Man, you feel come me? on, bro. Like come we on. ain't nowhere close to 2076, and this brewery has been here for three since forever. Like Man. that's just crazy to me. Like it's 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 amazing to think about, but you know it's that's just kind of like what we own. Like mm. at the end of the day, man. Like that's that's the longevity that we need to be shooting for. Like it's it ain't about right now. It's not like that's the difference. I think they say that like we look at you know what's happening a year from now, whereas you know our competition looks at what's happening a hundred years from now. You feel mm. me? Yeah. Like. You you gotta look long term, man. It ain't about right now. It's a, until this until this world blow up, it's about making sure that you you seen and you remembered and what you built is mm -hmm. remembered well after you gone. It's a fact, man. Pac ain't, I, Pac ain't made a record in a long time. Man, you can't go nowhere in the world and not hear a Pac record, see man. a Pac T shirt, Big, see a Biggie. Pac hero. Come on, Biggie, like same thing, man. It's beautiful, bro. I love this conversation. <laughs> I can't wait to the 25th man. when we sit down. Hella oh, we gonna start. Listen, oh, yeah. listen, listen. <laughs> man, shout out to Mario. Shout out to Chaz. 
our homies at Helicoastal, man. Thank you for bringing us in. Shout out to Manny, De Brewer, man. Shout out to Federation, man. We finna turn up in the town. That's a fact. February 25th, Come on, man. 4 to 9 p.m. Federation, right on 3rd and Jack London. If you're black, around the corner from Everton Jones. Yeah, you know, you, you know, already know. If, 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 you, if, you, if you really from the town, around the corner from Old Broadway, <laughs> yep, yep. Up, the street, up the street from the Oak Tree, up the street from Mingles. <laughs> Come you on, me? bro. Like, Come that's on. what we had. Everybody I went to school with, you know, in, in Oakland and San Leandro and Vacaville, all that. I want to yeah. see y'all. Come out and represent. Don't just come represent. Spend some money with me. Spend some money with Helicoso. <laughs> everybody I went to Clark with. Everybody I know in Atlanta. I want to see uh we I we good in Atlanta, man. I it was funny, Swerve. I went to the uh I went shout out to Baddies who drank beer last night at Hip and Ops. They had a they had a happy hour and they had name tags. And I was like, at the end of the day, if you in Atlanta and you don't know drought season, you in the beer community, I, I you must have just got out of jail or something. Man. We don't need no <laughs> damn tags. You feel me? <laughs> talk that talk. Talk that you talk. Know, talk at the end of the day, that's what it is, man. But please, you know, please come out and support. We appreciate y'all. Go to droughtseason.com. The Beer's Black History um, collection is up there right now. It is limited. It ain't like we doing a million pieces. If you don't get it on the website, if you don't get it in one of the events, you might not get it. And we gonna come with different things throughout the year. But as far as what you see right here, this crew neck, yeah. the trucker yeah. hats, we got the hoodies, man. When them things are gone, they gone. That's just what it is. Kev, what you got? They gone. Like he said, when they gone, they gone. <laughs> Atlanta was going to be going to sell. Um, I'm looking forward to going to Oakland, my home, my homeboy's hometown. Yes, Pittsburgh sir. has been in my ear. My hometown, I will figure out a way. I we got to do it, a man. way for us to have our brand, our lifestyle, our beer there. You know what I mean? We will figure out a way. I'm coming. Give me time. Mm. Um, South Florida, my people in South Florida, I'm coming. I will figure it. out a way. In my West Palm, my people in West Palm, I will figure out a way because I'm getting beat up on the, in the DMs That's about, right. like, can I get your beer? Like, I can't send it to you. Like, oh, you can't send me no beer. And it's like, well, I mean, I got to give it where it is, you know? So you know, we got to stay within these legal laws. That's you know right. what I mean? Legal. We are a yes. new company. The last thing I need is we did something left. So if nothing, yeah. I don't want nobody to taste the beer. But if you want to pull up in Atlanta, we are here. You want to pull up in Oakland. Um, you know, if you know when we pull up, it's going to be a good time. Even when we were in Grand Rapids, we did, you know, a great time. Absolutely. Wherever we pull up, you know what I mean? It's going to be worth you pulling up, even if it's for a conversation. You know what I mm. mean? So definitely, you know what I mean, come support. We appreciate those that have and looking forward to those that will. Thank you. Yeah, that's a fact. Yes, hey, sir. Yes, sir. I appreciate y'all as always, man. Another great episode. This is way more comfortable than the first one. The first one we were still spending, <laughs> we were spending a lot of game, but I can still tell. I was like, man, I, I, I kept saying draft season instead of drought season. I was messing up. Hey, man, whether it's draft or drought, man. Yo, man, I listen. Out. Hey, I listened to that whole drought, episode. I was like, man, I'm messing all the way up, but that's okay. That's nah, okay. It's we all good, bro. Good, it's all bro. good, man. Either hey. way, man, come on out. Hey, man, I appreciate, I appreciate you having us. Oh, yeah, man, thank y'all for, sure. for thank y'all for for just thinking of me, man, and, and to and to promote because, like I said, man, I definitely got to hold down Brandon all the time. But Kev, you too, man. But you know, yeah, town, word up. town business, recognized town, town business, business, always town love, business. man. Hey, man, you know, I'm from the I'm from the east, but my family have been in the west since. The yeah, hey, man, it's, it's Oakland, good. California, man. That's when you exactly. say, when they say where you from, you say Oakland, California. And then when you want to get into the exactly. politics, then you can talk about your different sides. Atlanta, know what we exactly. talking about. Come yeah, on, yeah, man. Exactly. But anyway, this has been it. another episode of Beer Talk. Now I'm the host, D. Neal, man. I'm gonna catch y'all in the next yeah. episode. We drinking beer. What you drinking, man? And come to the town, man. February 25th is going down. We out. Yeah. Cheers.